Hey guys, can you hear me? Hey guys, can you hear me? Does this sound okay? Does this sound okay? All right, good. All right, good. Guys, do you get these weird numbers on Market Smith from Goose? Seeking Alpha says the revenues are 31% year over year. Market Smith said it was minus two. Canadian dollars, so what? Canadian dollars have gone down like 30% against US or what? All right, I have only EPs in my portfolio right now. PLTR, I pretty much switched to almost only trade EPs nowadays. I don't even bother with breakouts. Because EPs are just, you know, there's just too much going on. Maybe I'm getting old. Most of these are earnings EPs. Not all of them. Yeah, there's been many we can do some ep special maybe tomorrow or next week or something what well, next week i'm gone like most of the week but maybe tomorrow or maybe today uh where is the scan uh, i don't know where the scan is because you know there's just an incredible amount of eps especially in the micro small cap land guys i'm gonna i'm telling you those of you who have like less than a million your accounts or less than hundred thousand there's just so much opportunity, guys. It's incredible. I'm teaching my girlfriend to trade and she has like, she only trades EPs now. And she has like 10 times the amount of opportunities than I have. It's incredible. How did I enter APLD? Uh, well, I bought the buy button. What do you mean? What does Davey think of my girlfriend? I don't know. I haven't talked to him. I wrote to him, but he hasn't answered. Typical David. He hates me. I hate him. So, oh, markets are open. Good luck, everyone.
I don't really see anything exciting for today. It's, we're ne nearing the end of the earnings season, so there's gonna be not as much going on. Guys, there's like a hundred people so far that hasn't been following the chat rules. Please follow the instruction on the screen. Before you write anything, you need to follow the instruction on the screen. You need to be following for a few weeks. It's, it's, the chat is just gonna be a shit show. If everyone gets to write whatever they feel like. This is not your typical stupid trader chat with you know bunch of retards write a bunch of shit. No, I want to keep it clean. I'm gonna be nice today, but next time I'm gonna put my moderators on uh, block mode. <laughs> I'm gonna give you one day to follow the instructions on the screen, guys. I want to keep it nice and clean. BFRG, yeah, yeah, the AI stock started uh, waking up, like AI had an EP four days ago, which I bought. Like the thing on this, the volume is not going away, guys. Like usually when you have stocks like this, the volume dries out, not on AI. It's a piece of shit, but, you know, that's what makes makes um, stocks go up big piece of shit stocks go up the most <laughs> yeah it's amazing how many people yeah almost 1600 and I have like streamed what five times the past year <laughs> Maybe maybe five times the past eighteen months. Well, 
Also guys, if you're struggling, I'm gonna show you a great strategy. And I'm just gonna show you how many opportunities there are for you guys with smaller accounts. I just need to find the scam for it. Where is the scam? Uh, oh, here it is. Oh no, what is this? This is one seven. Yeah, guys, like, there's so much stupidity in the chat. This is one of the reasons I don't stream. There's too many brain-dead people. Guys, follow the instructions on the screen, you know? Familiarize yourself with the chat rules. Understand how I trade. You know, 95% of the questions are answered there. We don't need, like, 500 people every day asking the same questions over and over again. I want to ch keep the chat clean and... I want people to watch this to make an effort. I don't want some brain dead person who wants some stock tips. I don't want anyone who follows me into my trades. No, I don't want you here. Go away. I don't need you. If you're going to be here, make an effort. Today, I'm going to be nice, but starting tomorrow, my moderators are going to block everyone who don't follow the chat rules, okay? Why be nice today? Well, it's the first time in a long time. And there's like a lot of new people. So I want to give them a chance to do the right thing before they get blocked. How in, in like four or five minutes, I'm going to start going through the... Since it's a slow day, I don't really see much to do here. <sighs> and also, guys, if you're new here, this is not a follow the leader room. You, you don't buy the stuff I buy. I don't want you to trade the stuff I trade. I'm not giving out alerts. Oh, let me just go. Uh, 
All right. In a few minutes, we'll go through the episodic pivot method that I learned from uh, Pradeep. If you don't know who Pradeep is, you haven't followed the instructions on the screen. I'm just gonna go through how much opportunity there is for those with small accounts. Like really, there's just an incredible amount of opportunity. If you've been struggling, I'm just gonna sh show you a really simple strategy. Well, it's simple, but it's not easy, like with everything else. But I know how the average struggling trader trades. He has eight screens, 59 indicators. He's in eight chat rooms, following 500 people on Twitter. No, you're never gonna make it. Stop talking about me. <laughs> yeah, I don't, um, I, I know the beeps, you get the beeps too, my alert beeps. It's a system sound. I don't know. It kind of defaults. There's a way to make it so you can, you guys can't hear it, hear my system sound. Um, I need to figure out how you did it. Uh, noise suppression. No. Um, settings here. Uh, uh -huh. Oh, system sound. None. Wait, none. But it's already none. Oh, I don't know. Jesus Christ, my fucking neighbor started drilling something right now. That's a sound in the background. Fucking neighbors. I need to tell them not to do any noise when I stream. You can't, oh, you can't hear it. Okay, good. Because there's a really bad noise just outside my window or down the street. All right, guys. So what is the episodic pivot? Episodic pivot is pretty much when you get news on a stock and the stock makes a big move on high volume. It's a big surprise to the market. Doesn't really matter what the news is. Sometimes it can be just some fluff PR like we had on like CXAI. This was the EP of the year so far. Went up 600% in two days. And I think it was even higher in pre-market. And it's just on, you know, really nothing. But it was an EP, right? Then we have stuff like PLTR at the earnings, surprising earnings, surprising good earnings. Same thing with Shopify, LI, Monday, all of these. FSLR, this one I sold because the price action on the solars has been horrible. Maxon, FSLR, ARI. No, ARI is actually holding up. They all had EPs. But you know, sometimes they fail. Actually, they often fail. But the point is, you wanna find these stocks that gap up eight, 10% plus. Sometimes they gap, gap up 50% or even 100% like IMGN, 90, how much did this one gap up? 102%, I remember, a big um, uh, EP I traded late, late last year. This one gapped up 200%. I bought it at 210 and it went up another 50% in four days. And look at the volume, the game changing news. It's a big surprise to the market. That's what you're looking for. And pretty much I have a scan 
I don't know how good this scan is though. Uh, let's see. Up X percent, so C. Okay, so this scan pretty much, let's say 14. So this one shows stocks up 50% in 14 days in the past six months. So how many stocks, wait. Uh, did I do it right? Uh, average, how much is this? One, ten, hundred thousand, ten thousand, hundred thousand, million, ten million. So is this the current volume? Let's take a zero away. Let's see what happens. Yeah. So there's like 444 stocks that have in the past six months gone up 50% plus inside of two weeks. These are the ones you need to study. And many of these were EPs. This one, an EP here. This one, uh, I, uh, wait, this one, this is, this one is sketchy. It's, it was probably not a real gap. It's kind of a split thing or something. AEHR, this one I remember. I was looking at it when it reported the earnings, an EP, high volume. Look at the move it made. And they, they don't necessarily have to be gap ups, but for me, most of the EPs I trade, they are gap ups of 10% plus. This one too, recently, probably earnings. And an EP, high volume, and now it's just going higher. Fuck, but I think my girlfriend traded this CP, if I remember correctly. You can't see it because of some random volume days here, but here, big volume. I made an explosive move, 40% in four days. And you know, this Acro, I remember. Uh, this one didn't go up immediately, but it had a, had a breakout here. It made a big move. So these are like, you, you know, don't take my word for, oh, EP is a good trade. Now, what you need to do is to study it for yourself. Is this guy bullshitting or is he, tell, is, is he actually uh, telling the truth? Is this really, you know, something you can trade? APLD, I bought it a few days ago. Some kind of AI related PR. They got a contract and, you know, look at the volume. This is with my um, small account that is tax free. So it's a very small position, but I want to grow that account up. And the best way to do small or grow a small account is to buy small caps. You know, like something like Shopify, it's not going to go up hundred percent in a week. It's just not going to do it. But something like APLD, well, you know, it's, it's already up 46% or 45% since my entry a few days ago. You guys, you, you small account edge. That's why I've always been calling it on my stream. Small account edge, ARCT, some kind of biotech PR, boom, big move. This is a scan in TC2000. So what you want to look for pretty much the logic is this. It's up within the last, within a 14 day period, it was up 50%. And this scan looks past 150 trading sessions. That's like about six months. You, you can change these parameters however you like it, but it's just to show. And the five day average dollar volume is a 1 million. So it catches the, you know, small thin stocks that makes the biggest moves. And the point is, this is how many, 444 in the past six months, guys, if you're struggling traders, this is where you need to look. If you want a simple method. Now, obviously I talk a lot about this method on my previous streams, and I also have a blog post. If you follow the instructions on the screen, you'll find those. If, if you want a uh, method that doesn't give you too many signals, and this is also great because you can be a working person. You don't need that much time. If you can be at the computer 30 minutes before the market opens until 30 minutes after the market has opened, that's all you need. You don't need more time. You need one hour of your day to find and enter these stocks. 
So it's great for working people, people have kids, you know. If you can just find that one hour of your day, that's all you need. Look at how many stocks, guys. If you if you if you think we are in a bear market, there's no opportunity. Oh, the debt ceiling. Oh, inflation. Well, shut the fuck up. This is this is what's happening, guys. Forget about all of that stuff. This is what's happening in the market, in the real world. This one uh, my girlfriend traded, VV, WW I mean. Look at the volume. Boom. 55%, 60% move in a uh, week and a half. There's just so much opportunity in the small caps. And it's the entry is pretty simple. It's just wait for the first, say, five minute candle. Let's see if we can go back to the WW. No, we can't. TC2000 is a boomer software. In trading view, you can go back like a long time. But let's just look some of these I have. Let's look at APLD. Just all you need, five minute chart. Just the five minute highs. Keep it simple. Once it takes, like this one actually took out the lows of the day at first and then like an, after an hour after the open, it took out the highs of the first five minute candle and the stop will be lows of the day. That's it. You don't need any fancy indicators. You don't need 18 screens. You can, you can be w anywhere with just a laptop. You can be, you know, you know, I have a 13 inch laptop I trade on when I'm not at home. At home I have four big screens, but I don't really use all of them. It's a super simple method. And go through, do, do the scan, find, you know, you can do your own scan with your own variations, whatever. One sec, guys. Uh, where were we? Um, what was I? I don't remember what I was going to say. Um, one issue with small caps being a large spread of bid asks. Nah, yeah, but that's why they make big moves. And also, it's not going to matter if you have, you know, a small account. And also, guys. You don't want to be more than 1% of the average daily volume of a stock. Because otherwise the slippage is going to be crazy bad. EPs are good for people who don't use IB. Why? IB is great. My girlfriend uses IB. Interactive brokers for those of you of you who don't know.
Anyway, my point is this is I think this is the best strategy for most people, but you need to, you know, gain some experience first. You need to study hundreds of these or even thousands. The, you know, if you can go back five years or whatever, I think, the you know, going back the past five years is a good because you get, you know, sideways markets, you get bear markets, you get the COVID crash, you get the raging bull market and you, you get a bear market. You know, everything is covered. You have all, you know, all the market conditions are covered if you go back the past five years and, you know, just study EPs. Look at what's, um, you know, what type of um, news and what type of volume is needed to get these big moves. You know, the stocks that go up 50 or 100 percent in a few days or a few weeks. Now we're talking, you know, micro and small cap or micro caps. I don't know. I don't recommend anyone to trade micro caps, but you know, small caps and even mid caps, they can also make big moves and sometimes large caps too. The point is you want the method that's easy, easy to manage. It doesn't take, you don't need to sit there 10 hours per day watching into 18 monitors. No, you don't need any of that. And there's also a lot of speculation money coming back into the market. We're starting to see some uh, stocks making big moves on um, on uh, on big volume. There's some some very intriguing stocks out there. I'm just looking for an entry point, but they're not there yet. That's the, that's the first time pretty much since uh, late 2021 we've seen that, you know, first time in uh, 18 months or so. Do I still avoid biotech EPs? I never avoided biotech EPs. Biotech EPs are some of the best. I mean, I am GN right now. Look at this thing. Look at the volume this thing had a couple of weeks ago. I bought it like, what was it, 11? Yeah, opening range size. Yeah, 11, that's where I bought it. It was really close stopping out. It had this mini, like a super sell candle. It was like pennies away from getting stopped out, but I didn't. And now it's, it's just consolidating. We'll see what happens. Like I talk about MDGL. I bought this one, I traded in December. It gapped up 100, no, 225% gap up. And it went, I bought it at 210 and went up another 50% in the next three sessions or four sessions. I absolutely don't avoid biotech EPs. They're the best. But I mostly trade earnings EPs because those are the ones you get most of. And those are easiest too. Safest Uber. This one I um, didn't trade, but this is like if you have a big account. This this is a liquid one. You know, it's not up big, ten percent, but that's not bad. Maybe it's gonna be twenty percent a few weeks from now. But again, the smallest ones are the ones that make the biggest moves. And also one thing I have uh, implemented that I didn't use that much as much because I was much more of an aggressive trader. I traded much more things in the days past is uh, just the market filter. Like I usually use QQQs and Russell. Well, actually my girlfriend uses Russell. I mostly use QQQs. 
Very simple filter. Pretty much you look at the 10 and the 20 day moving averages. The 10 is above the 20. That's good. The 10 is going up. That's good. And if the 20 is going up, that's good too. So you can use like a green light, yellow light, red light, kind of a filter on the markets, right? Because you want to avoid buying stuff when the markets are like this, right? Or this, or this. You want to be in the markets when the markets are like, oh, sorry, where is this? Ah, where did I move this from? I don't remember. Like this or this. Those are the markets you want to be in. And you want to be on margin. That's where you get big moves. Stocks make big moves. Many stocks make big moves. So you use, the, use it in a way that you either do fewer trades or you do smaller size. Because these periods are no choke. You get like intriguing things, like you get a great looking EP and it goes to shit. Why? Because the market is bad. You need the market in your back. Otherwise, you know, breakouts, EPs, things are not going to work. Just not. So right now it's a pretty good period, you know, stocks have followed through and stocks are actually, you know, going up on high volume, which is a character change over the past 18 months. Like we had the January rally, but that was mostly, you know, things rallying from the lows, like short squeeze rallies, you know, shorts covering. You know, a bunch of hedge funds uh, reducing their short positions. But what we're seeing now over the past few months are actually, you know, st stocks starting to break out of the basis on volume. Like if you follow um, Stan Weinstein uh, stage analysis, you know what I'm talking about. You know, stocks breaking out into from stage one to stage two on volume. And then staying there, finding support on the rising moving averages and then, you know, go higher. This is one EP I passed on. I didn't like the numbers, like 5% EPS growth and I didn't see the guidance, but I think the guidance was kind of boring too. But man. It's an AI related <sighs> stock. Damn, it's straight up, straight up. I tried it on a, you know, a couple of times, but I got always got stopped out and I'm like, nah, it's a shit stock. It's a choppy name. And then it had the perfect EP and I passed on it. Where would the entry have been? Here, here would have been the entry, 119. Up 35% since, not bad. Oh well. Did I pass on Celsius? Yeah, I'd never bought it, no. My girlfriend bought it. She's like 30% long this thing, not nah, 25%. Great numbers, 344% EPS growth, 95% revenue growth. And good guidance. It's a perfect, you know, it, it broke out of a two year base. It's been building higher lows for a year. And then it had this uh, high volume um, EP. That's like five star.
Powell. Yeah, my girlfriend is in that one. Yep, she bought it. Great numbers, good guidance. The volume wasn't like super compared to average. It was only like four times average volume, but the, you know, it was a perfect one, you know. A nice base, big, you know, decent volume, good numbers. A and a pretty good market. It's not a raging bull market, but it's a decent, it's a, it's a kind of a bull market. And there's so many people still doubting it, which is good. If you look at this uh, sentiment readings, like uh, AAAI, like everyone's so bearish or just very skeptical. And yet the markets are going up, stocks are going up. So who's wrong? Well, actually, it's been a bull market since like October. That's where stocks bottomed. This day here, October 13, that was the big one. There was like an uh, historical options reading here. Um, if, I re uh, if I remember correctly, this day here. There were like three times as many puts bought than uh, calls or something like that, or five times. It was like a historical reading. Look at, look at what semiconductors did since then. Straight up. Look at Nvidia. <laughs> this is the one, guys. Everyone of you, everyone should have bought Nvidia on October 13. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. That was the bottom. Now I don't know what the market is gonna do from uh, from here. Maybe this is the top and we go lower for another year. I don't know. But you know, we have all these you know negative news flow, all these bearish sentiment that. Stocks keep going higher. That's what they say. Stocks, bull markets climb a wall of worry. We had the same thing in, um, th we had the same thing about the debt ceiling back in, what was it, 2012, 2011? Um, I need to look at the chart. 2012, 2011, I think. Mm, I don't remember when it was. Anyway. Well, you know what happened since 2010, 11. Yeah, I don't remember. Yes, this is going to get uploaded to the YouTube channel. Damn, Palantir is straight up. Nice. Open, open, yeah, open was an EP. Not super high volume or anything, but um, yeah. All of these real estate names, Redfin, Zillow, they all, they've all been rallying. Zillow, not so much. They've all been, Zillow had an nice EP in uh, early January. I remember that one. I was thinking about buying it, but I never did. <clears throat> Yeah, I don't know what's uh, what the, what the thing about Palantir is. If you read like what people write about it, they're either super bullish or super bearish. 
It's the same thing as it was with Tesla. So I think this is this is one I'm gonna keep an eye on because if they execute, this could be like a huge leader. It's a polarizing stocks that you know they make huge moves. The stocks that some people absolutely love and the some people absolutely hate. Many of these micro cap, or, uh, yeah, small size micro cap AI pump stocks are kind of grinding higher. Just tells you some spec monies, stupid monies coming back. Or some of them are. Oh well. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. It's just a candle on the screen. Never get married to a position. It's like Dan Sanger says. Wait, what's how does he say it? He says, uh, "Love your stops, not your stocks." I think it. I think that's true. All right, guys, I'm hungry. I need to go eat something. I think I've talked enough for today. Bigger the thumb, bigger the moves. Yeah. All right, guys, thanks for joining. Don't forget tomorrow, my moderators, I'm going to get maybe a couple of new moderators too, because there's a lot of new people. Tomorrow, the moderators will start banning if you don't follow the chat rules. I don't want any stupidity. If you want to be in here in, in this community on the stream, you know, you need to put some effort in. I don't want any freeloaders or any brain dead or lazy people here. I want people who want to learn trading. Want to, and it doesn't even matter what you trade, how you trade. You don't need to trade anything like me. But I want people who are serious about this and want to succeed. All right, guys. See you tomorrow. I hope so, at least. The, not, the weather is kind of nice. So may, I may not stream. Who knows? All right. Good luck, guys. See ya. How do you shut the stream off? I don't even remember. Uh, oh, here.